RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents Transcribe, the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. There comes a time in every girl's life when she goes to her father for advice. But when her father happens to be Phil Harris, this can become very involved. More about that later. First, a word from RCA Victor. There's not much time before we vote for the next president. Only nine days, to be exact. But it's time enough to buy new RCA Victor television so you can watch the telecast of this important event. And on election night, as on any night, if there's a picture in the air, you'll get it best if you own RCA Victor Television Deluxe. The 21-inch Suffolk console, for example, has an extra reserve of power for performance plus wherever you live. And, like all new RCA Victor Television, the Suffolk has the magic monitor circuit system that acts like an engineer inside your set. The magic monitor screens out static automatically, steps up power automatically, and automatically ties the best sound to the clearest picture. Unmatched in performance, the colonial-style Suffolk Deluxe with its full-length doors is unmatched in beauty, too. For the ultimate in television quality, choose the beautiful 21-inch Suffolk console. It's RCA Victor Television Deluxe. See it at your dealers tomorrow. In fact, see the entire line of new RCA Victor Television. Prices start as low as $199.95. And remember, when you select RCA Victor Television, buy an RCA Victor factory service contract for expert installation and service. Now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Today is a big day in the life of little Alice Harris. She's having her first date and going to her first dance. Her mother has bought her a new dress for the occasion, and as we look in, she's just put it on to show her mother how it looks. Mother, mother, look at me. How do I look in my new party dress? Oh, adorable, honey. You look so grown up and... Wait a minute. What have you got on your face? Makeup. I'm wearing lipstick, rouge, mascara, and eyeshadow. Now you go right upstairs and take all that stuff off. A pretty young girl like you doesn't need makeup. Then why do you wear it? You're young and pretty. Oh, well, well I, I, I wear it to make me look older. Oh. <laughs> you know, otherwise people would go around saying your daddy married a child bride. <laughs> now, now, take that goo off before your father sees you. He's inside having breakfast, and if he ever Alice! finds out... Alice! Alice! What is it, Phil? There's no more cream for my coffee. Oh. Well, open a bottle of milk. Okay, where's the corkscrew? <laughs> Mother, did you tell Daddy about my going to the dance tonight? No, no, not yet. He still thinks of you as a baby, and he's liable to make a big fuss about you going out on your first date. And he'll never let you go if he sees your face like that. Well, you have enough rouge smeared all over to... Oh, him... that certainly was a good breakfast. Hiya, honey. I really enjoy... How do you do, miss? <laughs> I always like... <laughs> Alice, hmm? who's the short burlesque queen? <laughs> don't you recognize me, Daddy? Look, lady, don't call me Daddy in front of my wife. <laughs> Trying to get me killed or something? <laughs> I don't know you. Phil, you never saw her before? No, honey. <laughs> I'll admit I hung around the stage door once or twice, but I was just selling flowers during the summer layoff, and I had... <laughs> Phil, this is your daughter, Alice. Alice? You mean little Alice? How'd she get hurt? <laughs> Where'd she get all that blood on her cheeks? Father, that's not blood, it's rouge. I put it on to make my face rosy. You'd better take it off, or that ain't going to be the only part of you that's <laughs> going Honey, don't yell at her. 
She just thought she'd put some on to wear at the school dance tonight. You see, she's having her first date. Date? <laughs> With a man? <laughs> and what a man. He's blonde, he's four foot six, and he weighs 87 pounds. <laughs> Oh, no, she's got a date with Mickey Rooney. <laughs> well, she has a date with a boy her own age, little Johnny Wilkins. You know the Wilkins family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, we've met at a few cocktail parties. <laughs> He's in the clothing business, isn't he? <laughs> the world's largest manufacturer of vest pockets. <laughs> No, Mr. Wilkins is an attorney And his son is a very nice boy I don't care He's not going out with my daughter Why, she's just a little child A, a mere baby Only ten years old I'll get that My little Alice going out with a boy I can't bear the thought of it Hiya, Curly Oh, it's you Come in Shut the door Give me your hat I'm in The door's shut I ain't got no hat <laughs> What's the matter with you? Oh, Elliot, I'm a miserable man I know, but I like you anyway <laughs> What's wrong? Little Alice is going out on a date tonight with a young man She's going to a dance tonight with a boy No kidding Little Alice is going out on her first date, huh? Oh, gee, Curly, that's cute What's cute about it? You're not a father You don't know how I feel Don't you realize I'm losing my little baby? Seems like yesterday that she used to crawl into the living room, jump up on my lap, put her chubby little paws around my neck and lick my... No, that was the dog. <laughs> but I do remember the time that little Alice sat up in bed and said, Daddy, will you get me a bottle of beer? No. <laughs> no, that was Big Alice. <laughs> No, no No, she don't drink Beer <laughs> Wait a minute Did you ever sleep with me, Elliot? Yes, Daddy Oh <laughs> Look, I, I can't let her go out, Elliot She's too young she, She's only ten How old were you when you first went out? Well, that's different I was eleven <laughs> But we lived in the hills of Tennessee And you've got to start young down there <laughs> How old was the girl? She was eight, but she was a widow <laughs> Curly, there's nothing wrong with a girl Ten years old going to a school dance with a boy Maybe not, but look, she's so immature She, she don't know nothing about life Well, then have a talk with her Every father should have a talk with his child Well, I guess you're right All right, come on in the other room I'm going to explain things to my child Yeah Now, handle it carefully because you hello, don't... Hello, Elliot Oh, hello, Alice And little Alice Gee, how pretty you look in your new dress Thanks, Uncle Elliot I'm going to a dance tonight Not so fast Before I give my consent, I want to sit down with you and have a man-to-man -man talk <laughs> Bill... She's a girl Oh Well, in that case, go out and get me a small boy <laughs> I only know that man-to-man -man routine Curly, it's the same thing, only with reverse English well, What did you want to talk to me about, Daddy? Um Um About life You see, honey You're a girl And you're starting to grow up And you'll find out as you grow up you get taller <laughs> Oh, if my father had only told me things like that. <laughs> This is serious As I was saying, Alice You keep growing taller Until you become a woman Like your mother And that's when you stop getting taller And start getting wider <laughs> What are you trying to 
trying to tell me, Daddy? Well, just this. You're a girl. And the thing you're going out with tonight is a boy. And no matter whether you're a boy or a girl, man or woman, Republican or Democrat, don't forget to vote on November the 4th and sing, <laughs> Alice, and get me out. People have ever been so in love, been so in love, been so in love. No two people have ever been so in love as my lovely dove and I. No two people have ever moon such a moon, June such a June, spoon such a spoon. No two people have ever been so in tune as my macaroon and I. And when we kiss, and when we kiss, and when we kiss, well, it's like this. Well, it's historical, it's hysterical. Let me tell it. Well, certainly, darling. No two people have ever been so in love, been so in love, been so in love. No two people have ever been so in love as my lovely dove and I. Before and never again could never anything more romantic and beautiful be. No two people have ever been so in love. Been so in love. Been so in love. Been so in love. So in it's love. incredible no two people have ever been so in love. Been so in it's my love lovely love dove and love. this unique, the positive peak. Oh, we are the most unusual couple on no earth. No two people have ever moon such a moon. 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 What they mean is that no two People have ever been so in tune so with my macaroon and I. And when we kiss, and when we kiss, and when we kiss, well, it's like this. Well, it's historical, it's hysterical. Let me tell it. Well, certainly, darling. No two people have ever been so in love, been so in love, been so in love. Been so in love. Been so in love. It's impossible no two people have ever been so in love. Been so as my lovely dove and this is the dream, the very extreme, the thought of a dream you couldn't imagine at all. No two people have ever been so in love. Been so as my lovely dove and I. <laughs> Now that you've explained all about life to Alice, can she go to the dance tonight? Not yet. Before I give my final consent, I'm going over and have a talk with this boy. But what for? I want to know his intentions. <laughs> I want to know what he's like, what kind of a job he's got. Phil, he hasn't got a job. Hasn't got a job? No. What are they going to do, live with us? <laughs> Well, the boy is 11 years old I don't care I gotta know what kind of a character he is What he does with his time Curly's right For all we know, he may be a playboy Sure <laughs> Or he might be a used scooter salesman <laughs> All right, Elliot, all right Or worse than that, he might be a crooked gambler Who goes around fixing hopscotch games You can stop already This is serious If my daughter's going out with this kid I gotta find out about him So come on, you're going with me we're going over to see this Wilkins boy right now. Hey. Hmm? Hey, this is a nice house this kid lives in. Yeah. At least he's got a little dough. Curly, what are you going to talk to this kid about? I'm going to lay the law down to him. I'll tell him to bring my daughter home early, treat her like a lady, and stuff like that. Yeah. But supposing the kid don't like your attitude and gets tough. That's why I brought you along. <laughs> Between the two of us, we can handle them. Now I'll ring the bell Before and... Before you do. How big is he? Four foot six. Ring the bell. <laughs> We're gonna look this kid over carefully. If I don't think he's right for my daughter, he's not gonna... Yeah? What can I do for you? Are you taking my daughter out tonight? Well, I hadn't planned on it, but if I can get away from my wife, I'd like to. 
<laughs> Why? Wait a minute, who are you? Why, Mr. Wilkins. Oh, 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 well, you're the kid's father. Your size fool me. You're such a short one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's nice. I'm not making fun of your size, you big overgrown ox. Look, don't get gay. I don't want to talk to you. I'm here to see your son. Oh, no, you don't. I've seen your type before, and you're not going to get my boy mixed up in your tire stealing racket. <laughs> I don't steal tires. What do you steal? Money from radio sponsors. Why? <laughs> What did you two fellas want? I'll tell you what I want. Your son has a date with my daughter tonight, so send your kid out here and tell him that Phil Harris wants to talk to him. Oh, are you Phil Harris? That's right, Shorty. Did you ever hear of me on the radio? Yes, and I can't stand you. <laughs> that voice of you... Dude. What's the matter with my voice? I don't know. It just makes me nauseous. <laughs> nauseous? Sick to his stomach. Oh, oh. <laughs> Look, buddy, maybe you don't like my show, but I'll bet your wife listens to me. Well, I must admit she does. Yeah. She's been listening to you for years. Well, how does she like me? I don't know. She just sits there with her foot in her mouth and never talks. <laughs> Look, Wilkins, I just came here to see your kid. I'd rather see the kid's mother. <laughs> Elliot, will you stay? <laughs> Come to think of it, I'd take a short look at that, too. <laughs> look, stay out of this, will you? Look, are you going to let me see your son or aren't you? No, I'm not. I don't like your attitude. You're not going to see my son, and neither is your daughter. I'm not going to let him take her out tonight. That suits me fine. I wouldn't let my daughter go out with your son. Goodbye. Goodbye. Nasty little man. <laughs> I guess I told him off, didn't I? Oh, yeah. You loused up your daughter's date very nicely. Hey, wait a minute. Gee, I never thought of that. Now she won't be able to go to the dance tonight. Oh, Elliot, do you think she'll hate me? I'd recommend it. <laughs> it's little Alice's first date, and you had I to I know, go... I know, I know. Poor little kid. Gee whiz, I'd give anything if I could find a way out of this. Mm. <laughs> you know, Curly, it's too bad I never got married. If I had, I might have a son your daughter's age, and tonight... Your daughter could be going out with my boy Over my dead body <laughs> Elliot, what am I going to do about this? What am I going to tell little Alice? Tell her the truth Tell her that her stupid father messed up her date Well, I couldn't do that I'd rather have somebody put a bullet in my head How much does the job pay? <laughs> Oh, look, mister, I was all... Grogan! Yeah, yeah, it's you, Harris, eh? Who's your friend? Oh, you know him. He's your pal, Elliot Lewis. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't recognize him with his new name. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> now, uh, to get back to business, Harris, uh, what part of the head do you want to be shot in? Oh, no, look, Grogan, I was only kidding. I don't really want to be a shot. A deal is a deal. <laughs> Do a nice, clean job, and if your friend wants to get in on it, I can do it cheaper. I'm running a sale today. A sale? Yeah, two for the price of one plus one penny. <laughs> Hard to turn down a bargain like that, Curl. Oh, will you cut it out? I'm in enough trouble. Yeah, what kind of trouble? Well, my daughter was going to have her first date tonight, and I ruined it. You're a real lunkhead, ain't you? <laughs> Look, if that daughter of yours has her heart set on going out tonight, she's gonna go. But the fella she was gonna go out with won't take her. Then I'll get her another guy. Let's see, now, there's, uh, light-fingered Louie. He's... Uh... <laughs> no, he ain't out yet. <laughs> Grogan, my daughter is just a, a little girl, ten years old. Oh, uh -huh. well, then I'll get her a little boy. Where can I find a clean little boy? He's uh, 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I saw one riding a bike around the corner. I'll go over and I'll, uh, I'll uh, talk to him. I'll see you later, Harry. No, Grogan, come back, please. I don't want you Curly. to get no... Curly, Curly, Curly. Well, I Curly. don't want... Let him go. If he can get your daughter a date, it'll solve your problem. You ought to be grateful. <laughs> well, yeah. If he gets her a nice date, I will be grateful. Sure. I might even give him a, an autographed copy of my latest record. I happen to have one with me. Would you care to hear it? Oh, I'd love to, but fortunately, we don't have a record player. <laughs> we don't need one. Hmm? Just lie down, and I'll spin it on your nose and play it with my fingernail. <laughs> Let's roll it. Peace a pudding, peace a pudding, peace a pudding, ha! Peace a pudding, ha! Peace a pudding, go! Peace a pudding in the pot, just nine days old. The fatty cake, the baker's man Put it in the oven just as fast as you can Some likes it hot and some likes it cold But I likes it in the pot nine days old Piece of pudding hot Piece of pudding cold Piece of pudding in the pot Just nine days old Didn't care much about going to school It was all work and no play But when I came home about half past three I'd love to hear my mama say you got a piece of pudding hot, hot pudding, a piece of pudding cold, cold pudding, a piece of pudding in the pot, hot pudding, just nine days old, nine days old. A steak all juicy and brown But I looked on my plate And here's all I found Just a piece of pudding hot Piece of pudding cold Piece of pudding in the pot Just nine days old I don't want ham I don't want greens There's only one dish that pop my sing It's a piece of pudding hot You've got the pot hot pudding Piece of pudding cold Coldy cold cold pudding Piece of pudding in the pot The pot pot pudding Just nine days old Mama said, son, here's 15 cents Go watch the elephant jump the fence He jumped so high, he started to fly We didn't get back till the 4th of July A piece of pudding hot We got the pot, pot pudding A piece of pudding cold Coldy, coldy, cold pudding A piece of pudding in the pot hot, The pot, pot pudding Just nine days old Just nine days old Hot, hot pudding Cold, cold pudding Curly, it's been two hours since we left Grogan. I'm afraid he couldn't get a date for little Alice. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to go upstairs and tell her that she can't go to the dance. This is going to be the toughest thing that I ever had to... Come in. I just hate to face her and tell her that I your got her... Your troubles up... are over, Harris. I got your daughter a boyfriend. You did? Oh, Grogan, that's wonderful. Where is he? Right here in his boylap sack. <laughs> <laughs> he put up a fight, you see. I had to keep him quiet. Oh, naturally, <laughs> How do you do, son? How do you feel? Get me out of this sack, you stupid joint! <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who that could be. Ronald Coleman? No. Tallulah? No, her voice is deeper. Maybe it's Johnny Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be him. The bag ain't wet. <laughs> Could be the Continental or Liberace, or maybe it it's could. It's me, Julius, from the Ruta Vegas every week. <laughs> Stop playing what's my name and let me out of here. <laughs> Harris, Harris, we'd better let him out. All right, all right, I'll untie it. All right, there, you're out, kid. <laughs> <laughs> what's with you guys? Why are you always trying to kill me? Is there a bouncy on me, little hide? <laughs> Julius, why 
you're so excited. What am I excited, he says. You can't wait to get your mother and hands on me. <laughs> Why don't you open your house? You send your hatchet, man. I'll pick it. <laughs> It was a mistake. I was trying to get a date for my daughter. You got a Shanghai boy's for her? <laughs> What's the matter? She's starting to look like you. <laughs> look, Julius, I'm not going to stand... Now, don't try to persuade me. Nothing you can say will make me go out with your daughter. Nobody asked you to. The last thing I'd want to see happen to my kid. If she as much as walked out of the door with you, I'd slash my throat. You talk me into it, I'll throw it. <laughs> Look, I ain't gonna... Don't no, be... stand there, Max. Start slashing. Beat it, will you? I don't want you to come... Hey, is that Johnny? I heard... Oh, hello, Julia. Hello, Alice. Uh, how would you like to go to the dance with me tonight? I'd love to. Wait a minute. You don't mind going out with me, do you, Alice? Well, I did have a date with Johnny, but I'd rather go with you. I think you're the handsomest, sweetest, and most charming boy I've ever seen. Oh, I gotta have her head looked in. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd better run along or we'd be late for the dance. Hi, Arm, Alice. Oh, Julia. Oh, we'd better hurry. Goodbye, Daddy. Come back here. So long, Pop. Pop! <laughs> oh, what a sickening thought. <laughs> now, just take it easy, Curly. By the way, Mr. Lewis, will you do me a favor? What? Keep Mr. Harris lit in the window. We're coming home late tonight. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. What every home needs is a good, powerful radio. And that's where the new RCA Victor Lindsay comes in. The compact Lindsay is one of RCA Victor's finest table radios. It has an extra-large, built-in Magic Loop antenna, an RCA Victor preferred type tube. It's an extra-powerful table radio that brings you first-rate reception and even difficult signal areas. So visit your RCA Victor dealer tomorrow. See the Lindsay. Notice the clean-cut modern lines of its beautiful plastic cabinet. Notice the built-in phono jack for your record player, too. Then try the Lindsay. Turn it on and listen to its wonderful tone, made possible by RCA Victor's exclusive Golden Throat Tone System. After you see and hear it, you'll agree that RCA Victor's handsome new Lindsay is your best value in a powerful table model radio. What a wonderful day. Dennis, that is. See the hilarious bachelor adventures of the new Dennis Day, starring on the RCA Victor Show Fridays, NBC TV. Polio, infantile paralysis, respects no age, no race, no creed, no income bracket. It strikes young and old alike, leaving twisted and deformed bodies. So help prevent polio crippling. Give to the 1952 fund appeal of the Sister Elizabeth Kenny Foundation. Thanks, everyone, and good night. Good night, everybody. Included in this program transcribed were Bob Jellison and Sheldon Leonard. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Fresh, long-lasting RCA batteries will help you get the most pleasure from your portable radio. To enjoy year-round portable listening, take your set to your local radio dealer or serviceman First thing tomorrow, have him inspect the set and check the batteries. If he finds that your portable needs new batteries, have him install powerful RCA radio batteries. They're radio engineered for extra listening hours. Tonight, Theater Guild on the Air presents Hobson's Choice on NBC.